What up, world? It's Eternal Authenticity, broadcasting live. And now we're doing a video. Honestly, it's a video about the healthy principles for a healthy relationship. And I uploaded part two. Part one, I got an error uploading it, so I'll just do the first five. So in part two, about five principles, five principles for a healthy relationship, you know, that's already up, part two. I did the last five. So I'm going to do the first five right now. This is technically part one, even while uploading it after. But anyway, so number one is, yeah, and I wrote all these down. Like all this stuff, I'll be just coming off the top of my head. I'm not looking over here or there. I'm not, you know, I'm just doing it, you know. So this is what's been helping me. The, my, the experiences I've been through, this is what I've extracted from it. So number one is appreciation. So appreciation is simple in a relationship with your husband, with your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever the case may be. Appreciation is simple. So like we're supposed to appreciate each other with everything, you know, like just be appreciative that, hey, I'm together with this man. I'm together with this woman, you know, for whoever it is, husband, wife, vice versa. You know, y'all have to be grateful that y'all have found each other out of all the billions of people who are going rushing around in the world that y'all actually have some love. So appreciation, just being grateful for each other, you know, each other's presence, you know, appreciation with the simple things for, you know, uplifting each other for a hug, for a kiss, for a massage, for cooking, for cleaning, for ideas, you know, for just the simple things, just saying thank you at least once a day, make it so that you're saying thank you as much as possible, to be honest, you know, but at least always remember appreciation is important. Number two is trust. So trust is pretty self-explanatory, you know, like we're supposed to trust ourselves first and then our partner. So like, you know, with simple things, like if the partner says, hey, you know, I'm looking to walk alone right now, you know, just to clear my mind, you know, I'll be back, something like that. Okay, cool. What I've learned is, okay, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to change what they want to do, you know, and they want to be alone. All right. It may be kind of absurd. You may ask, you know, how are they feeling? What can we talk about? You may try to address certain things or whatever. I don't know. But like, you know, you just trust, hey, if they're going to walk alone, and they really just want to walk alone right now, let them walk alone. Trust that they're just going to walk alone. You know what I'm saying? Trust also, okay, let's say they want to go to their friends, their family member's house, or they're going to class, or they're going to work, or here, or there, or whatever, or they're helping you out with your own personal stuff, you know, your own belongings at home, you know, your own financial stuff, whatever, you know, and you're trusting them with that, you know, because that's how it's a true test because, you know, you're supposed to do to others what you would be done, what you would want to be done to yourself. So like, of course, none of us are perfect. None of us are saints, but like we do generally know and realize, okay, you know, fire with fire doesn't work, you know, and thankfully, the small minority of us, we've gone through most of our life learning that. We might have had little bits and pieces here and there, but we learn, okay, if you're constantly stealing from someone, if you're constantly, you know, just causing destruction, that's going to come back to you. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't steal. That's why I'm living a peaceful life and constantly improving myself, you know, because it's like, it's just common sense. You know, it's common sense. That's why all this news stuff and drama is ridiculous because people are complaining about guns, about like, about what's happening to them, but yet they're the ones who are waving guns around, shooting each other, killing each other, and causing all type of drama. You know, that's why I'm not in that world. That's out of this reality, you know. But trust, simple things with trust, you know what I'm saying? If you know that you've been faithful, if you know that, oh, you know, you're being very mindful and careful with your partners, maybe personal information, 
with their belongings, just being out on your own, though. You know, if you know that you're doing well in your own heart space, truthful, honest, like, and truthful, loyal, and trustworthy for them, then that's how the trust gets built in reciprocation. You know, and I've had to learn to just calm down and breathe and relax, just let go, you know, and just to trust. So trust is important. Affection, number three, affection is what it sounds like, you know, like, for me personally, as a man, I love affection. I love when finally I'm not always reaching my hands out trying to hug. You know, I love when I have surprise hugs. You know, I love hugs. You know, people love hugs. People love affection. So, like, affection. When you're with your husband, your wife, whatever, your partner, you know, like, being affectionate, giving a hug, giving kisses, giving massages, writing little sweet notes, framing up some cute photos of each other, you know, writing poems, reading poems, serenading each other. Maybe you play the guitar or the trumpet or the drums or whatever, you know, just like simple things like that, like affectionate things that are only made for each other. You know, you don't be just trying to sleep with the whole world. You know, I'm talking about that deep, exclusive love, premium love, you know, affection. And mm, two, three, four... Okay, another one. Four, number four, prioritization. So, like, prioritization is what it sounds like, too. You know, like, depending on what your situation is, we're just going to use the example that I love. The most simplest form of love is when it's a man and a woman, and it's husband and wife, king and queen, whatever you want to talk about, and it's just them two, and it's nothing else in the picture, just them two. That's it. I don't care what you think. I don't care about your opinion. I don't care. I don't care. We're talking about this Example, right now, right here, right now, a man and a woman, they're together, monogamously. That's it, all right? Prioritization. That's where the man wakes up and the woman, his wife, they wakes up next to, that's his first and only priority, you know? Also, he has work. He has some services he may do. He has some other things going on, but she is a priority. She has the key to his heart. You know, she is with him. Even if she's not with him, she is with him. She is with him. If he goes to the store and she stays home, he's with or she is with him while he goes to the store and vice versa for the woman. The man has the key to her heart. So when she goes to work or school or whatever, he is with her. Even if he's not physically with her, he is with her through heart. You know what I'm saying? And they are the priority. You know what I'm saying? Like, they come home to each other. They wake up next to each other. They do almost everything together. You know what I'm saying? In a healthy way. There's no other side choices, side piece, side stuff on the side, you know, sneaking out little text messages, this and that. You know, people trying to get in between y'all's relationship, people trying to tear y'all apart, people trying to creep up and try to cheat. No, there's none of that at all. In a true relationship, there's none of that at all. It's prioritization. You know, without a doubt, without a question, boom, with the heartbeat, you calling your wife or boom, in a heartbeat, you calling your husband. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's real right there. You know, yes, we have family. You know, they're there. That's another type of love. But you know what I'm saying? Everybody else gets pushed to the side and it's your one. That's the priority, you know. All right. And number five is going to be respect. So, like, all of us desire respect. Of course, we're supposed to give respect to get respect. But, you know, just respect. That goes with the whole faithfulness thing, too. You know, like, respecting each other. Maybe if you're traveling or something or, you know, like, you're going out, you're going alone, you're going out away from each other for a little while or whatever. But just being able to respect, you know, verbally you know, by like not con- not trying to tear them down continuously, not speaking low on their name, you know, by, you know, respecting each other, who they are, you know, y'all both were a person, y'all both were someone before y'all met each other, you know, so like, for instance, I'm a vegan, so like, I love when people respect that I'm a vegan, and I've learned to respect people who aren't vegan, you know what I'm saying, I've learned to let go of judgment, I've learned to let go of it, I've learned to accept 
people's choices, you know, and, you know, just the respect there. So it's like, for me personally, it's like when you're a vegan, you're really sensitive and you love being around other plant-based natural people, vegetarians, vegans, whatever, or people who are open to it, you know, and even if I'm not discriminating against nobody, but it's like, be respectful of it. Like vegans aren't going to resonate with someone who's coming into their house with a whole bunch of guns and a whole bunch of, you know, fur and dead skin and all this stuff, you know, making fun of killing animals, making fun of killing people, making fun of sickness and disease and destruction. No, that's not cool at all. It's not respectful at all. So, and vice versa, you know, no other, I guess, meat eater or whatever would like or would participate, would resonate with the vegan getting all up in their face, screaming at them, you know, trying to change them, tearing them down. You know, they may be spitting some truth about the food, but you get what I'm saying. You know, a mutual respect has to be there regardless, you know, by staying faithful and loyal and just, you know, being real about them. You know, if you know someone, you know, is not into politics, is not into religion, but yet you're constantly trying to force them to be into religion, force them to, you know, go be in a political debate or vote or whatever, you know, that's out of character and it's disrespectful because you already know where they stand. You know what I'm saying? So it's just common sense. So respect. That's number five. So anyways, y'all go check out the other video. I have part two, which is technically part one because that one uploaded first, but whatever. This is just concluding the 10 principles for a healthy relationship values for a healthy relationship. You know, I'm alone right now. I'm at a space where I'm alone, you know, having time to work on myself. But I'm just saying throughout the relationships I've been with, you know, it's good, bad, and straight ugly, you know. So, like, we're supposed to extract the gold from that and just make it into a golden relationship, you know, that has a solid, sturdy foundation structure, you know, of good values and principles, you know, to avoid it from plummeting, from to avoid from it just crumbling away, you know. So that's that. It's just some stuff I'm learning. Yes, I'm a lear- young man. I'm learning daily, but at least I'm doing something. All right. So anyways, thank you all for watching. Y'all have an amazing day. It's Eternal Authenticity broadcasting live. Peace.